Um, well, thank you. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, I'm Doug McFadden, uh, Chief Informatic Officer for Harvard Catalyst. Um, I probably know many of you, uh, having been here frequently uh, and working closely with uh, several of you. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of Shrine, what's happened recently, where we're going. Um, and um, as noted um, in previous years, not everybody in the room has actually used it before. So I'm going to take the risk of doing an actual demo and see Ooh. if that works. So cross my fingers, hopefully it works. So um, Shrine was implemented back in 2009, shortly after the original uh, CTSA award to Harvard Catalyst, the created Harvard Catalyst. Zach um, brought a bunch of people together to um, look at this concept of networking ITB2 sites together. Um, so um, at its basis, it is uh, it exists to basically query across multiple hospitals um, in real time. And in this case, um, from day one, it was designed to be used by all the qualified investigators at the hospital. So this is a federated network with a um, federated uh, usage model. Um, it has been implemented. It, it, uh, Try and uses a, a very flexible network architecture. It can be fully matched or hub-based. There's been many implementations of both. Um, it is on top of IT people, as I think most of you know. Um, uh, because Trying is designed to support a large user community across the different institutions, um, built into Trying is a data protection and governance process, which I'll uh, describe in a little bit more detail in a future slide. Um, and it is open source software. Um, the Shrine, since the beginning, has been open source. We've received um, a number of contributions back, a number of people have taken it, making lo local modifications. Um, so we have a pretty active open source community, uh, which has, I think, led to a number of the different implementations that have occurred over the years. Um, let me just briefly. So this is uh, Open.med is the open source site. Um, for um, my lab. Open.med is the our open source website uh, where there's a number of projects hosted there. Um, obviously, Shrine is uh, one of the, the key featured ones. Um, the uh, bottom slide, I will give you a browser uh, view of it. It's um, the specific uh, open source community website. It contains a number of resources, documentation, uh, information about how to become a member of the Shrine community, um, information about our recent releases. Um, that uh, is uh, kept up to date. We uh, will find uh, some detailed documentation in here, uh, in particular. There's a compatibility matrix with ITP2 and um, a fairly detailed history of releases of Shrine and uh, some of the features of uh, the most recent work ongoing there. I encourage you, if you're interested in using Shrine or are using Shrine, become familiar with this website. This is a primary vehicle for us to communicate out to the community about what's going on, uh, when uh, releases are coming up. And uh, a lot of information about how to use uh, the existing trial release. In addition, uh, the community uh, website, or sorry, community uh, mailing list is accessible here. So um, I was uh, listening to the, uh, the ITP2 Transmark Foundation talk and recognized a lot of sort of the principles that were being applied. Um, with respect to uh, the open source uh, software management are things that um, we've embraced for a long period of time. So I'm glad to see this uh, relationship moving on. Um, the, so you know, Shrine is, like I said, it's been out there since 2009. We are, um, 
as an open source community project, we uh, listen to our community and try to direct the future for trying development based upon the needs within the community. We do that uh, in conjunction with um, also looking at some of the, the planned new implementations. Uh, there's going to be a talk um, after the break about the ACT network, which is a large scale implementation of Shrine and V2. That uh, I think we'll go into a little bit more detail about what's going on with respect to ACT. Um, but ACT has uh, been a great example of an area that's sort of driven the Shrine development because the scale of the ACT network is significant. Um, there's 21 sites in the ACT now, and there's a goal to have around 60. So looking at scale problems uh, within Shrine has been a key area of our work. And um, as you can see, there's uh, a number of things that in the past, have been part of our um, focus to address scale, uh, handling a, a hub-based network model, um, caching previous results locally, and um, handling the data protection uh, in a more effective fashion. And then, of course, updating our governance support data steward functions um, all have been uh, looked at and redesigned in order to handle those, this large scale scale out. Um, the app network uh, has a specific use case for recruitment of uh, subjects into multi-site clinical trials, and that's a data use case that we are uh, focused on supporting. But there are many others, and I know that the uh, skills network here is looking at a variety of other um, use cases, and to the extent that uh, trying uh, supports that, those use cases, we're engaged in the, uh, helping to facilitate them. Uh, we do around two two releases a year. These are releases that go through a significant amount of QA and compatibility testing. Uh, I dare say they're sort of you know production grade releases, so that's why we keep them to around two a year. So here is where I was intending to go to my uh, demo for the folks that haven't seen Shrine before, but um, I will note that I put my browser on full screen mode. Ah, oh, there we go. And now cool. All right. So um, this is a, a sample network we've set up uh, that we use for workshop. The, uh, the Shrine Web Client, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Shrine but know I2B2, looks a lot like um, I2B2. It's derived from I2B2, and we uh, have customized it for uh, some of the, the issues associated with um, dealing with the network and some of the governance that goes with um, access to the network. So I'm going to do a, just a quick query here. I'm going to do a query on acute tonsillitis. Um, so um, just like I2B2, the terminology is accessible through this pane. You create your query. Um, it has all the flexibility that I2B2 does to uh, great complex queries, uh, time constraints, and so on. Um, unlike ITB2, Shrine has this concept of uh, approved query topics. Um, one of the, the rules that is commonly used within a Shrine network is that users um, need to get a, a prior approval uh, for their research project uh, within the network. Um, and so I will briefly show you some information about how the, the role of the data steward interacts with the user here, but for this purpose, we're just going to pick a query topic that allows us to run the query. Um, in this case, we're not going to go through breakdowns. We're just going to shoot the query out there on the network. And this network is highly responsive. Workshop. And so you get to see the query results. In this pane, there are a number of visualization tools that have been contributed back to the open source community that um, allow one to sort of look at the results um, in a variety of uh, you know, sort of laying, laying them out in graphic displays and then uh, create tables and access through CSV files and so on. So a lot of flexibility in how you can visualize the results here. And one of the big things, of course, we notice is all the visualization tools in the system are great, but people generally want to get their data out. So the uh, download the CSVs. Popular feature. 
And then lastly, the, um, the queries are all saved over here in the previous queries. And this is where um, we expect that uh, most of the researchers are going to come in different sites and use this, uh, use Shrine, and iterate. This is a real-time tool, while the response uh, time that you saw here in the queries is um, optimal because this is a uh, S network. Um, normal queries will take a little bit longer, but the idea is that you're getting results back in minutes. Uh, we expect people to iterate over a large number of queries as they narrow in on what they're really interested in and try to uh, focus on sort of getting the, the right answer. Once they've got the right answer and uh, in a network where that um, is the starting point for uh, subsequent use case, whether it's a uh, clinical trial recruitment use case or some uh, use case where limited data sets might be extracted downstream, um, we um, allow the user to then take that query, so the top query here in previous queries is the one I just ran. Uh, we allow the user to take that query and uh, flag it. Um, and uh, basically what they're doing here is they're um, inserting uh, a message about this query that is going to propagate out to all the sites so that the administrators of those sites, the ITD2 administrators of those sites, then facilitate the downstream data use case, whether it's um, a further refinement of this set, uh, this patient set at their site into a recruitable cohort or some other um, data extraction, data sharing type of use case. Of course, this is a fairly primitive starting point for these use cases. Um, and as we learn more about exactly how they're gonna work, um, probably more information will be supported in the uh, the process here. We did recently expand the, the size of the text field. While well, this little type in box here is very small, it can handle quite a bit of data. So um, I think there's some experiments going on right now where a more detailed uh, quantity of information that um, is collected and basically cut and pasted into this um, so that when uh, this uh, information is received at the sites, they actually have quite a bit of more information. Sometimes it might be referring to um, how they want the, the request to be processed um, at each site. Um, so by clicking that button, basically that um, query that um, I performed throughout the network and try is now being communicated to all of the sites in the network so that they um, can then uh, pick up that ball and run with it in doing ITV2 modification or operations on that that uh, patient set that they have at their site um, to generate whatever the, the results the, the researcher and their collaborators at the different sites are, are interested in. All right, so that's that's it for the, the quick demo. I would like to um, tell you a little bit about this concept of the data steward. Um, every network that's uh, Every network, but most of the networks that are implemented within Shrine um, do look for some level because the network is open to essentially any qualified researcher at any of the sites. Um, there is a need for some level of oversight to make sure that the researchers are sort of following the rules of the road. So there's um, the concept of a data steward. Um, each site. Um, so originally there was a single data steward for the Harvard network overseeing all the users, but um, over the last year and a half, um, we've implemented the concept of a federated data steward so that um, essentially this data steward stewardship role uh, transitions from being central to the network to being associated with each site. So each site has a responsibility to keep an eye on its own users. Um, users submit a basic description of what their research topic is to the data steward. The data steward um, then um, receives that description and has an opportunity to pick it up and basically say approved or disapproved. Um, if they say approved, then uh, the demo that I showed you where I picked the research topic, you can then actually start to go and execute your query under that research topic. The data steward then has the capability over time to go and look at the activity of that user and determine whether um, that user is uh, 
uh, basically executing queries that are consistent with that research topic. Basic principles for stewardship when you're dealing with a large sort of population of potential users. Cool. So um, that's sort of the, the basic uh, where you know where Shrine has been. Um, the, uh, uh, the Open.Med uh, website has a uh, uh, as they recall some project pages. Um, Let's get to the shrine one. There we go. So, um, yeah, that's the team that has uh, participated, um, the active team now, and the team of uh, people that have been involved in shrine over the years. Feel free to go to the website and uh, you know, find somebody there. If you want to reach out to them, go right ahead. Um, so lastly, I'd like to talk about a little bit of some of our thinking about going forward, where, where we think Shrine needs to go. So um, you, as I'm sort of talking in the demo there, um, I said we had a, a convenient demonstration network that was highly responsive to the queries, and so all the results came back in a matter of a second or two. Real world networks, especially large real world networks, um, do not always respond that way. You know, some sites might, the query might be complicated, some sites may take some substantial period of time. Uh, this is, from a usability perspective, it's a little frustrating for users to push the button, and even though results come back in a few minutes, um, it's frustrating for users to sit there for a few minutes. So one of the major features that we are um, looking at in a future release of Shrine is essentially presenting query results um, asynchronously. So as a, as a site um, executes the query and has a result, um, we will be uh, allowing that to be basically all the way back through and be displayed to the user. And so if what you really care about are some of the uh, you know, some basic answers from the network, um, some that may have uh, the most sort of uh, efficient sites that are quick to respond, you could have your answer uh, very quickly. You can wait for later, you know, come back to uh, uh, you know, tomorrow if you're uh, not interested in waiting you know, more, more time uh, in this session to uh, get the, the final results. Um, we're also looking at improvements to the previous results in these large networks where those results take a long time to come in. It's particularly useful to be able to um, Go back to your previous results, see how many, see what has come in, you know, ten minutes later or ten days later, and uh, finding good ways to present that information, and then of course connecting your previous results into one of these downstream use cases um, is uh, one of the areas that we we'll focus on, sort of improving, making improvements a bit longer. Uh, so that's basically what I had uh, as far as a quick overview of where, how Shrine has got to where it is and where we're going. I wanted to leave a fair amount of time for Q&A, although I don't know how we're doing on the overall schedule, um, because this is the, the one opportunity that we have uh, to talk to such a large audience and talk to folks that may be using Shrine or be thinking about using Shrine and understand better sort of what your needs and challenges either have been using it or some of the barriers that you see to adopting it. So um, let me repeat the question. So um, when flagging the query, the name uh, needs to be unique in order to avoid confusion with other ones. So it's a great point. Um, that there are actually mechanisms built in to how that query sort of exists and how it be propagated to that avoid sort of technical uh, inflation with other queries, but agreed that if, um, if two researchers basically enter in the uh, very brief comment, like, this is the one I care about, and they all write that. You can make it complicated for the receiver on the other end to determine which one is the right one to move forward. One of the reasons why we're, we're looking at sort of uh, making uh, uh, more detailed information captured within that. Um, the, for instance, the, uh, some of the information that does carry through right now um, will allow the, the receiver to go and sort of see who the requester was. 
um, which will of course help this video unless the same person you know does two flags and says the same thing which would be a little silly but um, that's possible so um, agreed I think that the, the point that you know um, uh, sort of a uh, uh, more detailed information capture in the flagging process as needed both to disambiguate and to support the use cases is an important next step. So I'll repeat the question and then I might look to some technical experts in here to help me answer this one too. So there's a question, the question was, is there going to be a way for the authentication for a data steward, which, uh, so I showed you screenshots of the shots of the data steward app to be integrated within uh, the I2P2 environment, I guess, sort of. A, is it was the point um, single sign-on would be better? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to look to, to, I don't know, I guess David there back in the tech lead for um, trying um, can comment a little bit more uh, precisely on that one. So I'm going to, I, I realize that probably a lot of people may not have been able to hear David. Um, even though I'm on the other side of the room, I, maybe the echoes are good in here. So um, I'll, I'll paraphrase quite a bit here, which is um, the point is appreciated um, and the desire to um, essentially address the, the multiple login scenario is, um, is on our to-do list. So it's, it's important. But I think that the, the technical complication is the data steward app itself is a new separate app, um, and um, the, the Shrine Web client, of course, is built within the I2D2 technology stack. And so, getting those to, to you know share a cookie or something like that that um, would be uh, sufficient for a single sign on uh, runs into a little bit of technical challenges, but um, uh, desirable to do. Uh, the the hopefully the impact of not having single sign on is not huge because the number of times a user actually needs to log into that app to submit a query topic are is few, and the number of times they are to log into the, the query tool to actually execute queries um, is much larger. So, um, in our what we've seen is that typically, you know, users come in and create one or two query topics, and then for a long period of time, months typically, are just using the, the web client to execute sort. I know that wasn't a perfect answer to your question, but that was the, uh, the best we could come up with right now. Other, I will note that one of the original folks that got this baby rolling is here in the audience today, Andy McMurray. <laughs> Came over from the West Coast. Um, he was responsible for uh, getting Shrine up and running several years, so.